So this is the One Laser XRF, a brand new desktop CO2 machine. Uh, I did a full review on this machine a couple weeks ago, and since then I've actually gotten a lot of comments and questions about the machine, and there were a few things that I was wrong about. So in this video, I want to address those uh, and hopefully give you a little bit more detailed look at this machine. First is that it has a removable lens uh, that actually pops out right here. And I was saying that's great because it allows you to do different focal lengths, and it's also pretty unique in that you can clean it very easily. I had a lot of people say, hey, that's not unique to one laser, pretty much all CO2 machines can do that. And that is true. Uh, you can remove the lenses on everything from Ohmtech to Glowforge to Xtool to pretty much all of the manufacturers. The key thing about this that none of the other ones do, to the best of my knowledge, is that it's like a quick release uh, where it's actually held in by magnets and not screws. So you can just pop the lens out really easy, clean it, and then drop it back in and you're good to go. The only other manufacturer I've seen do that is Aeon with their new Redline series. They all are removable. You definitely can do that. It's it's just more of like a quality of life feature that this guy has. Now, another feature that a lot of people are interested in is a rotary. Uh, and yes, you can use a rotary with this. There's actually a connection for it right in the back. Now the Z-axis distance, like the thickness, um, you're not gonna be able to do a rotary unless you have this riser. They're calling this the base boost. Um, so you will need to get this, and I believe this is about 500 bucks extra uh, to be able to use a rotary with it. I and mean, really the only other machine that you don't need something like that, that is a desktop machine is the Thunderbolt uh, because it is a good bit taller. You can fit a rotary in there fine, uh, whereas this one is a lot wider for its work area than the Thunderbolt. Now, if you do pick up the base boost, which is what I have right down here, then you get access to features uh, like a pass-through. And I'm gonna drop this down uh, with our uh, Flexi Spot table, which is the sponsor of this video. So since you can take out the honeycomb, then the work bed can actually slide out. Uh, and then at this point, you can slide this in. Let me pull this back up so you can see what's going on. On. You're gonna get these slots to where you can put this in at several different positions. Mine's actually a pre-production unit, uh, but in the one that they're shipping, you'll have actual labels for the distances to the laser head. But then for the pass-through itself, you can do bigger material going through the front. The back also has a panel that will flip down. And depending on the thickness of the material, um, you can kind of put it all the way through. There's plans to do like a conveyor belt style that we've seen Xtool do in the future. They also have this center divider right here. This is a pretty thick, solid, aluminum block, uh, but you can remove that. So you have material that is really thick that you need to basically go all the way to the bottom. Um, you're gonna have the ability to do a full pass through. But by having that in there, um, especially with doing like high speed engraving, it adds a lot more rigidity to the machine. And speaking of that high speed engraving, again, this is a 1200 millimeters per second. And uh, the first video I did, I actually had it sitting um, on uh, that little table right here, which is like super janky. I actually had it uh, in my very first YouTube video ever. And I tried to stabilize the footage when I was showing this thing engraved. Uh, but this is what it was actually looking like as it was going. So you can see there's a lot of speed in this machine. To where now I have this on a much more uh, solid table and this one is a good bit more sturdy. One of the great things about One Laser and something they have been really clear from the beginning is their focus on the community and the folks that are gonna be using these machines to hopefully build businesses or sell things on the sides. But One Laser is definitely listening to their customers about improvements they can already make to this machine. And one of the things I actually requested was is that anytime you do an operation, you're gonna have to autofocus the machine. So if you're running the same thing like over and over and over again, you basically have to re-autofocus it each time. And there's definitely been several times I've just forgotten to autofocus. And this does have autofocus built in, super easy. You just do it from the panel itself. Um, but I was just forgetting to do it. So they're already making some firmware adjustments to the machine to where you can change some settings to where that's not going to happen. But you can still leave it on if you wanna make sure you clear your material and any clamps or like fixtures you have on the side. So the the laser head doesn't bang into it. So that's why they've got it retracting all the way to the top at the end. But it's cool to see them listening and already making updates to the machine. Uh, some other updates they have told me about. Now again, these aren't on this machine, but they are saying these are gonna be ones that are shipping to the folks that have bought them and buying them in the future. First is a beam expander. And we talked a lot about this actually in the initial review. Um, this is on the back of the Thunderbolt. Um, basically all the beam expander is, is like a little lens on the end of 
an RF tube. Uh, so this is RF specific, but it allows you to dial it in. So you basically are fully in focus on both sides of the machine and you kind of like fine tune it. That was something that a lot of people were saying that's going to be like an aftermarket thing you have to buy, but that's something that's going to be included for no extra cost. Now, one of the things that allows me to make these videos free for you are sponsors. And we do have a sponsor for this video, and that is FlexiSpot, the maker of this table uh, that I have been using quite a bit. And so this is an adjustable sit stand desk. I actually have a couple of these in my shop. I use them for applications like this, where I have machines on it. Uh, and for me, it's actually really handy because I can like adjust the angle for the camera, but they actually do make for a really nice workstation. And then obviously if you want to use it for a desk and computer, it works good for that as well. Now specifically, this is the E7 Pro and actually just has two legs. They also have like four leg versions as well. And even just with two legs and two motors, you can see this is easily lifting uh, and then dropping this laser, which is well over 100 pounds. So uh, you can add a lot of stuff to this desk and you can feel confident it's not going to go anywhere. Another thing I really like that they do as well is you can get tops that are solid wood. So a lot of desks that I've used, including the ones that I've made myself, um, are like MDF and they sag and they get nasty over time. Having like solid wood is gonna be way more robust uh, and it looks nicer, but you get a bunch of different options too. Now, in addition to just being able to move this up and down, it also has several preset positions uh, to make it really easy to reposition the desk as you go. And you can save up to 65% with FlexiSpot's Black Friday sale. So you also have a chance to win free orders during this period. And you can use this code to get an extra 50 bucks off the E7 Pro standing desk. All right, let's get back into looking at this machine. Now, another update is they are modifying the design of the laser head um, to reduce the weight. What's great about that is you're gonna have increased performance at those higher speeds and those like changes in acceleration to give you a better quality cut and like increase the life of the machine. And I think they're saying like between 20 and 30% um, reduction in weight, um, which is really great to see. Now in the review video, I said exhaust fan uh, and air compressor, and I kind of got those interchanged. I did not mean to do that. So those are two totally separate systems. This is still gonna come with an exhaust fan. Um, which is right here in the back. Uh, they're still recommending using an inline fan. That's something they have talked about that might be included. You can also pick one up for around like 60 bucks as well. It's not required, but it definitely does help with the overall exhaust. Uh, but if you don't get it, you still are gonna have the fan in the back. Now I was using that interchangeably with the air compressor and the air assist, which is totally different. That is the compressed air that is coming right out where the laser head is. Uh, they have an internal air compressor, so, but they also have a port on the back to add in an external air compressor to give you more consistent and a stronger stream of air. And you can switch over the tubing inside of the machine itself uh, to make it easier to work with. So those are two separate things uh, that they have built in, but are two separate things um, that you can basically beef up that will live outside of the machine if you want to. Now, another thing that I said incorrectly was the fact that this was unique in the fact it had a DSP uh, controller and specifically that uh, Polar does not. And I was totally wrong. Polar does have a DSP controller that, and they actually have an upgraded one in the Polar Plus. And all that really means is you get a lot more control with the DSP controllers versus a G-code style controller, um, which is what you're going to have on the Xtool P1S, as well as the Atom Stack Hurricane. And one of the reasons I put these class of machines higher than those. Now, one thing that I didn't test or show in that review video um, was the actual camera connection. Uh, and so I've gone through the camera calibration process uh, and this is what it looks like inside of Lightburn. Uh, basically, you get a little camera readout on the top right, and then you're able to refresh that camera feed into the workspace. So if you want to position things on material that's already in there, that's pretty much the way it works. The camera is good quality. You can definitely see everything you need to in there. But like with most of the lasers that include a uh, red laser dot for positioning, that's what I'm gonna use the majority of time and actually frame around my material before I run it because I find it to be the most exact possible. But it's also great that you can use the camera as well. The only like drawback with the camera, and this is more of a Lightburn specific thing, is you need a separate connection to the camera and then the computer itself. Lightburn can basically bring in any camera that you have. So it just comes in just like a normal USB camera. And that's why it's a completely separate connection versus all being on one thing. I wish they had a better way to do that, uh, but that's just the way it works right now. Now the build quality and the internals for this machine is one of the most impressive parts of it. And a lot of people wanted a more detailed look at the machine itself. So I'm just gonna take the camera and go on a slow tour of the machine 
and all the circuitry and stuff so you can kind of see what's inside. All right, so we're gonna do a tour of this machine and we're actually gonna start on uh, the right panel. So that has been pulled off, uh, but you can see uh, you've got all the cables in there and they've even said they're going to improve on uh, the current cable management Although they have done a pretty good job to begin with. Let me try to get a light up in there uh, but As you can see I'm pretty sure that is just the straight motherboard uh, We've got some power supplies we've Got some more boards down there and uh, we've got another one right up there and then uh, that black box is the uh, driver for the stepper motor which then brings us to the back of the machine, which we're going to pull that open right now. All right, so now we've got the uh, back panel uh, removed. It's coming around, you can see we've got everything for the emergency switch uh, right there, that blue guy, and then all of our uh, computer connections. Then we've got our PC connection, our camera connection, and I'm actually hooked up by Ethernet port going into a router. But then coming across, this is the actual internal uh, pump, which I've actually used uh, this external pump uh, that I've got. Uh, down there. Then we got a few fans going on. This is just like a PC fan. I'm um, just ventilating this area. And then we've got another fan right here that is exhausting down. And then moving all the way across, this is our uh, 38 watt RF tube. Um, you can see that we've got several fans that are attached to it uh, that are ventilating it so it doesn't have to be air cooled. Um, and then the laser actually fires from here, bounces through that mirror, and then goes into the machine uh, with that mirror right there. Uh, and then uh, this guy, is actually our red dot diode that is being reflected then going into the main machine as well. And this area is also where we're gonna be able to see the uh, lens. Uh, we'll be able to fine tune uh, the beam going across the machine uh, that will be attached right there. That's real similar to the bolt. And they've actually partnered with Zamiya to manufacture these RF tubes uh, to where they're going to be making a custom one specific for one laser. All right, coming into the work bed itself, actually gonna move the laser head off to the side. Right there is where we've got the uh, laser beam coming out and it travels and it bounces through this head. So again, we've got adjustment screws there to make the repositioning of that uh, really easy. Uh, then the light, then it travels all the way into the housing, into this hole right here, where once we get inside, it can reflect down and then fires through the bottom of the laser. And then for movement, uh, so we've got a stepper motor here that is moving this in the X. You've got that going right there. And then our Y stepper motor, uh, they actually have contained inside of this housing. And we have a rod going in from either side and it's like right back inside of there. And then our Z axis stepper motor is right there. Uh, that's letting this drop up and drop this down. But again, coming to the back, they've done a good job with cable management. All of that is managed uh, pretty much within this run right here, which then gets fed into the electronics all down there. And then the work bed itself, again, is uh, removable. I don't know if I can do this with one hand, but it just pops out just like that. And then you can actually see the pins right there to where it locks into place. So there's actually no way for this to move back and forth. Everything is locked and good to go. And then the air sensor uh, lives actually right here, and that gets fed up to the readout. Um, which is right there. My lights are kind of weird, so that's probably hard to read uh, right now. But if we move all the way to the top with all the main controls that you need uh, to be able to uh, control the machine, it's really easy to use. It's really easy to get to all of your uh, previous files, load everything up, and then play around with the settings as well. And then last but not least, you've got our rotor connection right here uh, with the switch to turn that on and off. And then finally coming up to the lid itself, there is our camera. And then you've got a few sensors over here on the right. Uh, these are your magnetic sensors, so it knows when the door is shut. And those are matching up with these guys right here. And that's actually a lot harder uh, to trick versus just like a switch that you can have like taped in. The magnetic ones are always a good way to get. Probably the biggest question is just the fact that One Laser is a new company. Even though they have a good warranty of three years uh, and they're also offering lifetime support, uh, some people are wondering like, what does that really mean if this company may not be around for forever. You might have seen they actually have a really good connection with Thunder Laser. Uh, they're actually using the same production lines and there's a lot of connections between the two companies even though they are separate. So I feel pretty confident saying that they're going to be around for a while. There's a lot of laser companies I get pitched uh, that show up in my inbox and uh, honestly by the time I get back to that email the company is like completely gone. So I would not make this video and recommend this machine if I didn't think they were going to be around for the long haul. And one last thing this actually is available outside of the United States. Uh, the shipping piece of that gets a little bit tricky. So they let me know to let you know to reach out to sales directly at this email, and then they can get you a quote for shipping going directly 
to you. All right, hopefully that clears up some more questions that you guys have. If you have more, let me know down in the comments. And until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.